Hello and welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me for today's special topic as we take a look at Mars in Aries and how Mars is going to be deeply reprogramming us with what we want, what we desire, how we go after what we want. The Aries energy is really going to show us some primal energies within ourselves and we're going to have some opportunities here to work out and untangle what has been holding us back, especially at a deeper soul level. So in this episode, I am going to talk more about the transiting Mars in Aries energies. Mars will enter Aries on June 28th, 2020, and stay there until January 7th, 2021. And this is going to be a longer than normal journey through Aries due to the retrograde energies of Mars. Mars is going to be stationing retrograde in Aries on September 9th at 28 degrees of Aries and then station direct November 14th at 15 degrees of Aries. So that's the terrain that Mars and Aries is going to be traveling back and forth between three times is that 15 degrees to 28 degrees of Aries. And if you know where that is in your chart, you're going to be able to hone in on what you are reprogramming and reworking in yourself and in your world. In addition to the astrology of this energy, I've also been feeling a lot of really strong messages to share with you around the reprogramming and the re-emerging of masculine energy. And this masculine energy is within each of us. It is not based on gender or sex. It is how we go after what we want, how we assert ourselves, uh, the development of our self-leadership, our ability to develop confidence in who we are, to feel strong and powerful. The Mars energy shows us how we go into the world, how we follow our dreams, how we trust our desires, and how we assert ourselves. So also in this show, I'm going to be talking about this deep reprogramming of the masculine. So a lot of men may relate to this information as well as those of you who have strong Mars in your chart or are more dominantly masculine in your general energy field because there has been a lot in your world that has probably been removed and taken away, destroyed. Uh, It's just been out of your control. And I'm going to talk about what that means at a deeper level and how the second half of 2020 is actually preparing you for some very powerful new starts and new beginnings. And of course, with everything, there is a timing involved. There are cycles of energies involved. And there's a lot about 2020 that has been like taking a deck of cards and then just throwing it up in the air and saying, okay, there's my life. My life is just scattered everywhere. Nothing is in order. There's chaos. There's no nothing happening that is orderly or what I thought it would be. And so this is a year of a lot of this reshuffling, of reshuffling our lives, of our energies, of reshuffling our priorities, and it can all feel out of your control. Of course, you can look at it as it pertains to COVID and how there's been huge job losses, huge economic changes um, where careers are gone, professional tracks have changed, uh, family issues have come up, relationship issues have come up. It's like everything has really been brought up to our awareness in a very powerful way. And the gift in this is to be more aware of your own energy, more aware of what you really want based on a deeper truth of who you really are, but it has been a slow process. In fact, what I'm seeing in terms of these changes, um, that it's been at least, at least since probably 2017, that there have been these bumps in the road, so to speak, or big life changes. And I feel that it really pertains to the very strong eclipse energies of 2017. Um, For some people, it might have been 2019 or even just this year when these big changes came through. But there's been this rolling energy cycle of shifting away from who you were. And it's supporting leaving the 3D matrix, which really is about our egoic definitions of self and and the shoulds of our lives, or I should be this, or I should want this, or this is what I thought my life would be. I thought this is what would make me happy. I thought this is what would really help 
put me on the path to a great life journey. It's like we had all these preconceived notions, but the thing about this lifetime is that the energies are moving fast and the cycles are very dynamic because this is about, it's bigger than just you or just one person. It's about how the planet is evolving and shifting in this current cycle of energy. And it's requiring all of us to do the same. And so we've all had our own individual journeys around awakening, around ascension, around what it means to step into your own energetic strength and your spiritual gifts, um, how to trust yourself more, and then all the changes that brings up in your life and in your world. And what this is moving towards, for those who have been willing to go through these changes. And I'm laughing because I know it doesn't feel like you're willing at times and you just resist it. And you're like, I don't want to do this. What's happening. But there's a bigger energy moving you forward because there is this ability to create a new life that you absolutely love, but it's not here yet. We're we're still have cleaning up to do. There's still this mess, right? Of all these deck of cards on the floor and and how do you organize it? How do you get it into order? And how do you make sure that it's the right things that you want? There's still this shifting process that we're moving through. And part of 2020, in addition to the really big energies that we've already been moving through, is that it's really brought up relationship issues. And so we've seen it with the very big uh, Venus retrograde energies. And then we also have Mars retrograde this year. And so it's really brought up your own understanding of what you need, who you are, what is correct for you. Perhaps it's shown you some really big lessons, um, some really big areas of healing and growth, but perhaps have been really heartbreaking. Uh, really devastating, um, some hard hits, so to speak. And again, I feel this over especially the past three years, but it could be any number of timelines for you personally. There's this deeper reworking within us of our own feminine and masculine energy so that they are working together in harmony and balance with full acceptance and with unconditional love. And this is actually a part of our collective soul journeys in this lifetime that hasn't been done before. Because there hasn't been the energy on the planet to support this type of growth or this type of consciousness. So we are all reworking relationships at a very deep level. And so here we have this Mars retrograde and this Mars and Aries energy coming in that's going to be very powerful in the second half of 2020 that's showing us more of what we really desire and what we really want. But it's going to be something to navigate strategically. So let me give you some dates to be aware of. And then I'm going to go into more of the masculine energies here that are really strong and have been talking to me very clearly. And I want to share these messages too. So with this Mars in Aries energy, what Mars in Aries does is it shows us a new start. It initiates a new consciousness and a new adventure. Aries being the first sign of the Zodiac says, let's go, let's do this. I'm ready. You know, you want to get out into the world. You want to start something fresh and something new. And there's this really motivating energy of being ready, being ready um, because after Mars has been in Pisces, where there's been a lot of clearing out, a lot of letting go, uh, Mars and Pisces can feel discouraging. Um, It can feel like there's a energetic depression of release. Uh, The last usually 10 degrees of Mars and Pisces can feel like there's a void, an energetic void of I've let go of so much, a cycle is completing, a cycle is ending, but the new isn't here yet. Then Mars goes into Aries and it's like the match is lit and it's that fresh fire, fresh zest for life comes in and it has that sense of, okay, now I'm ready. Now the energy is there. So Mars enters Aries, and as it travels through Aries for the first 15 degrees especially, there is strong support for something that you want to get rocking and rolling. Like there's that energy of, okay, the energy's here to help me launch, move, trust, go for it, know who I am. Mars in Aries is subjective, and it is about putting yourself first. Uh, And I know that that can get a bad rap, but it's almost like just being responsible for your energy is a big responsibility, is crucial. So Mars is going to travel through these 15 degrees of Aries until July 27th. And that's when the energy has something very 
clear in it, very fresh, very new, um, a sense of possibility, a sense of I can do this, I want this. It, it's a very invigorating energy. Then when Mars gets to 15 degrees on, we'll call it actually July 26th and July 27th, there's a shadow zone that he enters that's where he's going to be in retrograde and traveling back and forth three times. So from the end of June, June 28th until July 26th, there is that inspiration of movement, of new ideas, something in motion, something in progress. And it could even be you have some clarity around what you want, okay? Like that, just that gut level, intuitive, energetic hit, this is what I want. Then when Mars gets into a shadow zone, again, there's a slowdown and there's going to be the reworking of the timeline. And one of the gifts of Mars in Aries retrograde is that it's making sure that you have shifted your energy and shifted your level of consciousness enough that you're not starting a new cycle based on older unconscious actions. So there's an energy here of really being aware that whatever you're starting fresh or starting new, you aren't falling into old habits. You aren't going and reverting back to, this is how I've always done it. But I also feel like you're not allowing a lower consciousness of yourself to drive the energy or drive the show. This is where it's very important to be clear about who you are now, who you are now, what you want now, and to allow that to drive the car, not the older parts of you to drive the car. So part of this is really checking in with your level of consciousness that pertains to your belief systems and your intentions. What do I believe about who I am now? And do I really trust and believe that I can go after what I want and create the life of my dreams based on what I've learned about myself in recent years? As much as the Mars and Aries says, I'm ready, I'm ready, let's go, let's go. This is actually ensuring that this new cycle you begin, because Mars is going to begin a new two-year cycle. This new two-year cycle you're beginning is based on a higher consciousness, not the expired versions of yourself. So that's very important to check in with and it makes sure that what you are creating and what you're moving forward is in energetic alignment. Now, this is going to be a time of slowing down because this Mars is going to be checking in with the planets in Capricorn. And that's going to bring up some more things that need to be work, worked out, untangled, um, decided, sorted through, and it could be a bit choppy. So here is the heads up about Mars and Aries retrograde. There's going to be false starts. And these false starts, again, are giving you the gift of time. If you can see it that way, okay, I'm being gifted with more time to work on this or more time to sit in this or more time to move through this healing, this lesson, whatever it might be for you. I'm being gifted with time so that I can really be complete with some very big things. And what happens is Mars squares Jupiter in Capricorn, Pluto in Capricorn, and Saturn in Capricorn in August. So starting August 3rd, Mars squares Jupiter retrograde at 19 degrees Capricorn, then squares Pluto retrograde at 22 and 23 degrees of Capricorn, then squares Saturn retrograde at 26 degrees of Capricorn. So all of August, things are really being worked out, but there is not an ease to this. Um, this is a very big energy of perhaps battles, inflammation, uh, power issues, power struggles, uh, different intentions with leadership, different desired outcomes. And it's because that Mars in Aries wants to operate on its own principles. It's, it's the lone wolf. It's the, I'll do it myself. I'll take charge. I'm going to go my own way. But the Capricorn energies are about a bigger system, a bigger dynamic. Um, it's about what has been in place for a very long time. What this Mars is doing is he's coming up against three Capricorn energies that are basically telling him no. 
So there's this ego desire of what you want. And throughout August, there is, a, I just feel as a battle, as something that gets worked out, but could bring up anger or impatience or rage or power issues. And it's a slowdown. And so there is this tumultuous energy with it. And there's a sense of um, what you want, you can't have because it's not time. And again, this is about a process unfolding. This is about things um, being worked out. And I feel like for many people, it comes up against this Capricorn energy, which is not only about um, what has been established and what is and what's the authority figures. It's how you, how you deal with authority, how you talk to authority outside of yourself, the bigger, um, it's like the bigger, even legal matters, right? It's, it's about, there's, there's legal things that need to get worked out. There's people to answer to. There's, um, this could even be like a job change. Like you see what you don't like at work, or you see what you're not happy with and you're so impatient and you just want to leave and get out of there. But there is something in you or, or you're just noticing that it's not time. It's just not time. So you have to like struggle through something because the universe is saying you need to look at something here. This is the assignment. The assignment is looking at how your ego responds to cycles and forces that are bigger than you and how you can heal some deeper energies. I feel it at a uh, root chakra level where you're trying to make something happen but there's bigger energies in control. You can't make it happen. You can't make it happen. It has to happen when the timing is right. Um, so on a collective level, this can be a lot of anger. This can be a lot uh, that's related to more rioting, more anger, more fighting, more inflammation, um, a lot coming up and out. And the gift of that is that we see what needs to be healed. We see what needs to be worked through. We see the current energetic assignments. So there's a lot here about emotions and reactions being extra amplified. And your responsibility is yourself, but there's energies here that are really going to be triggered. Now, August is a big month for all of this. Then Mars is going to meet up with these planets again in late September into mid-October. So Mars is going to square Saturn at 25 degrees of Capricorn, September 27th. Uh, we'll then square Pluto at 22 degrees of Capricorn, October 8th, and then square Jupiter at 19 degrees of Capricorn, October 18th. So the end of September into most of October, we're revisiting the same issues again. And this is where you can understand the road ahead, that there's going to be things that you're pacing through, that you can't rush through, you can't force it through, conserve your energy, uh, check your ego at the door, look at what needs to be worked out within you that has not been matured. The Capricorn energy is about maturity and the Aries energy can be immature. This is one of the lower expressions of Aries is that it's like, I want it my way. I want it to happen now. I'm very impatient. I'm very impulsive. And again, it's looking through, looking into rather what those fears are in you. And it can be that fear of if I don't make it happen, it's not going to happen. Or if it doesn't happen now, Maybe it's never going to happen. You know, it's looking at what are the messages that come up for you around these Aries energies. And if you have Aries in your chart, then you'll know this. Um, and likewise, if you have strong Capricorn in your chart, then you'll know that side of the coin too. So we're really working out these Aries and Capricorn energies within ourselves, which is how what you personally want relates to what's happening in the bigger picture. Because Capricorn is uh, not only uh, the government and politics and your profession and your career and, and what's unfolding in your, in your life, but it's looking at where you're taking energetic control and understanding your mastery. So this is going to be a development of mastery around what you want and understanding that there's things that still need to be worked out in the second half of 2020. Mars meets up with Saturn and Jupiter only twice, and that's because they both move into Aquarius in December, and then Mars will square Pluto for the third and final time at 23 degrees of Capricorn on December 22nd. 
of these transits, the biggest energy is really this Mars squaring Pluto in Capricorn because it's also happening at the point of that January 10th eclipse. That was when COVID started, right? That was when our world started to change permanently and there were hints of what was to come in terms of finances and economics. And so here comes Mars triggering this energy again, bringing out the anger, bringing out the reactions, bringing out uh, more of maybe even what's been repressed and showing us where we're working through some deeper things individually, but also you know, it's the anger at maybe what's been controlled, what's been, um, how things have been handled. Uh, there's a very unsettled energy here. Every time Mars squares Pluto, it's a very big deal. And for it to happen three times, um, it's like, I'm getting the image of like an overthrowing energy. Like, like there's this rising up or there's something coming up that's really significant and we're going to see it. I mean, this, this, a war energy. And of course, I don't want to say that with any intention of, of war happening in any way, but that's what this energy is, especially for it to be happening over the span of five months. There's a lot about the second half of this year that's the reaction or response to the first half of 2020. For those of you who are in my 2020 Soul Growth Astrology webinar, uh, make sure and sign back in and watch this part of the webinar where I talk about the Mars retrograde and I talk about what to look for in your chart because the other thing to be aware of is of course how this is showing up for you, which houses in your chart are being amplified, which energies are coming up very big for you. And also to look at where you personally are working out power issues and how that's showing up for you, how that's showing up in your life and what that means for you in this lifetime. So now that we have a general lay of the land of this energy and what the Mars and Aries desires might be now and how they're coming up against very strong and powerful Capricorn energies, I want to relate this to the energies of the re-emerging masculine. Again, this can be the masculine energies within all of us, and it's about what we want, what we're here to accomplish and go for, how we're here to assert ourselves and to know ourselves energetically. But I'm going to speak about this in terms of men, just for ease of conversation, just to explain it in a way that makes sense and to ask you to relate it to your own life and to your own world. Because there has been a very deep reprogramming of masculine energies on the planet for a number of years. And what is happening at a core level is that there there's a programming for both divine feminine, divine masculine energies that's been challenged, so to speak, that's being reworked and elevated so that it can truly be activated in our lives. And so the, I'm going to speak generally here about masculine energies as the provider, as the one that performs, as the desire to make something happen out in the real world, uh, to be successful. Uh, this can be about profession, career, family, relationships, all of the above. And it's about how in recent cycles, and I'm seeing it in terms of decades, okay, and even <laughs> you could even say all of the 21st century. I'm seeing this wide span of time that's more about the modern age, the modern era, um, especially after the Industrial Revolution especially after World War II, uh, there was this very deep energetic programming within the masculine energy of what it means to be a man in the world and how that means providing for the family, uh, doing things in a certain way, being financially stable, uh, being able to take care of your family. It's like this very clear I'm going to call it, it's like a um, job description of the masculine energy. And so this is changing and it's been deeply changing. It's actually being elevated and it's being awakened. But before the elevation happens, it's like you go down into this very dark place. There's been this very dark cave that the masculine energy has had to go into. And it's shown up as loss, as challenges, as very intense experiences of the world that have challenged that sense of being stable, 
And the energy that comes through the strongest around this for me is the financial energy, financial stability, um, the self-definition through career or through profession of I'm going to you know, be this in the world. I'm going to get my education and go out into the world and have this expertise and be known for this. Um, there's been this deep reworking of what the masculine energy thought was essential to their self-identity. And essentially, there's been this big questioning around life purpose. What is my purpose? What is my mission? What is my work? And to masculine energy, this is very, very essential. In fact, it's the most essential thing often, whether that's conscious or unconscious. It is what am I doing with my life? How am I moving through the world? How am I being productive? How am I reaching my goals? How am I going after what I want? Very big things. And I feel like for so many, that has not only been reworked, it's been removed. You thought you had something stable to count on. You thought, you know, you were always going to be a banker or you thought you were always going to be a lawyer or always be um, working in one industry or one profession. And something happened that deeply challenged that, whether it was a change in the economy, a change in a work situation, a change in family, a change in uh, relationships, a change in any area of your life. There was this energy of a microcosm that you were controlling or get you had the illusion of control right like I'm working really hard I'm putting aside money for retirement or for my assets or um, I'm reaching these heights in my career it's kind of like there was this sense of being in control and then these bigger energies came in and it said oh no actually you're not in control at all and I've talked about this um, through the energy of having all these Legos, right? And you're like, okay, I'm building up my little Lego town and I have my Lego castle and I have my Lego fort. And then a Godzilla comes in and like tears it all down. No fort for you, no castle. It's all been demolished and it just sinks and destroys that sense of purpose or that sense of self. And again, please take this and apply it to your life as it sees fit. And remember, this applies to women too, because we also have the Mars energy in our charts. So it's basically what your ego defined and what your ego thought was you. So what has happened is that there's been this it's just been a lot, I just feel it's a lot of challenge for the masculine energy, but the challenge is a perception of control that you quote unquote thought you lost. So there's been this deeper experience of having no control. Um, I'm hearing for some people it's been financial ruin. It's been huge financial losses. It's been very destabilizing um, in money, which uh, again, I'm generalizing here, but that's often very, a very big deal to the masculine energy is to have the finances in place and to have that reliability. And it's been challenged. It's been removed, depleted, destroyed. And it's been a huge time of going into what's this all about. And what I've received about this is that it's looking at the deeper fears that have been in the unconscious or subconscious about what it means to be a divine masculine or an awakened masculine at this time on the planet. And so the deeper removals of the finances or career or relationships or family, or even, you know, this can relate to your physical health. This can relate to any area of your life um, where you put you unconsciously overemphasized its importance. This is about going into the heart because a lot of masculine energy has been unconsciously over providing, over performing, over functioning. And it's been part of a programming. You could say it's related to family especially a father figure or a father who did a lot and, and you wanted to emulate them or conversely, who did not do a lot and you're like, I'm not going to be my dad. I'm going to do this well. I'm going to do this better. Um, this could be related to cultural beliefs, cultural programming, community programming, spiritual programming, any number of things that you were operating that actually were never truly connected to your full heart. And so there's this heart emergence that's happening 
for a lot of men about what they truly love, but I feel like you were brought to your knees first. Like it was like, okay, wiped out because the universe is like, this is not all of who you are. This doesn't include what's in your heart. And then there was this void. It's like things were removed, destroyed, taken away, and then a huge void. And in this void, there's quiet, there's listening. It's interesting because I also feel like that's when, if you're not conscious of a void and the boundaries required, that's when old energies can seep in. And I'm feeling it as even... um karmic energies, incomplete energies, like more lessons. <laughs> and it's almost like, oh my gosh, what, what more can I take? And so then there's a new lesson that comes in, in the void that you then have to clear out too. Again, I feel like it's just been a really tough road that could have blindsided many people. And it's like, what is going on? Why can't I get my life back on track? Why can't I get back into this groove that I was on for so many years? What what is missing? Why can't I do this? And then it becomes something where it's like, I feel the energy collapsing on itself. It's like being so hard on yourself as if I had all this control. I had this great life before I had these things set up or I was doing great in my career and then all collapsed on me. And why can't I get back on track or why can't I get something going? Why can't I get free? That's the other part of this energy is that for some you have been energetically tethered and tied to situations that you can't escape from and you have felt caged and you have felt so stuck. And I get the image of this, um, it's, it's like a cord in the back and it's in between the trapezius muscles. So the upper back, right? And it's like right there and it connects to the spine and it's like this place of being attached to something, someone, some experience that you can't get free of. And it's just been depleting your energy. Like, how do I get away from this? How do I free myself? Again, no movement, no control, no sense of what you can move forward. Or it's, it's like not just being in control, but it's like this whole removal of what the ego self has wanted. And it's been very big for so many people. And it's not talked about. I mean, this is like big life-changing stuff. And maybe you offer some things here and there, you share with some friends or you talk with some family, but it's bigger in your mind and it's bigger in your energy than you would ever, ever share. And the reason for this, and again, I'm, I'm talking about men, um, is because I remember something my mom told me, which is about how when women talk about a problem, they cut it in half meaning it diffuses. It's not as big. It gets smaller when they talk about it with a friend, a sister, etc. But when men talk about a problem, it becomes double. It increases. And so there's this sense of, well, who do I talk about this stuff with? I need to just figure it out myself. Uh, that can put more pressure on oneself and kind of get locked in to some things like not being able to see the fuller view or to see new solutions. But what is happening now is that it's really important to have a place to either talk it out or to take in new information. And this can be through, of course, books or videos or training or something that supports whatever you're moving through so that you know you're not alone. And there's a lot of programming out there for men that they need to take care of things on their own, that you're a man if you handle it on your own. But remember, what's happening is that you're opening up your heart. There's a heart expansion that's been underway for the past three years, and you're meant to feel safe to share more of your truth with people who are trustworthy and willing to listen. And so again, this could be a family member, a good friend, a counselor, a healer, wherever you can go to get it out and to know that you're not fully alone. And part of this that I'm seeing at a deeper level is that the deeper reprogramming for men is looking at the fears that have followed you for lifetimes about masculine energy. And it could be something that you've never even thought of before, or rather you thought it was about a job, or you thought it was about money, or you thought it was about something with a family or relationships, but it's not any of that. It's actually much deeper. And it's going deeper into the fullness of masculine energy that is incredibly balanced when the feminine energies within you are loved, accepted, and allowed. And those feminine energies come through 
the heart, come through a passion, come through your self-expression, your creativity, your inspiration, um, anything that you really feel excited about um, that emotionally opens you up. This is different for every person, of course, but this is part of the purpose of the destruction and the loss that masculine energy has gone through. It's actually more of a heart opening. It's meant to show you more of who you are. And so here you perhaps were thinking, oh, I was on this track and why can't I get back on that track? It's like that track's gone. That track is over. That's an expired version. That is who you thought you were. It's even a smaller version of yourself. It was a conditioned version of yourself. And now there's so much more that's going to be opening up and coming through, especially in 2021 and beyond. And so if you can see this as a preparatory energy that is showing you more of what you want and allowing you to go into more of who you are, that's also going to open up a new sense of purpose. And I feel that for many men, it's again, it's sort of like, oh, I thought you had to be a banker or that you were always going to be in a certain line of work, which served its purpose. And if you can look at it as, wow, that was really successful. I did this for so many years. I had this career. I had these achievements. I accomplished that. I got this title. That was a really successful time in my life. Now I'm starting another successful chapter, but it incorporates more of what I love, a new passion, a new goal, some new understandings of my skills and what I can do, what I can offer. It's a more balanced expression of purpose. And it's coming up for many men now and in the years ahead. Um, I feel like there's some people who have already been understanding more of what they can do in the world. And then again, it's, it comes back to the finances. Like, how do I make this work? How do I make money doing this? How do I set this up properly? That's going to come. So again, there's this preparatory energy. And as I talked about in the first half of the show, this Mars energy is going to have some false start for you to figure things out, to get a check of the real world. And that's part of the Capricorn energies. And so adjust your expectations accordingly. It's sort of like you can know what your new passion is or your new purpose. You can know what you want to do next. And don't take it personally as things shift and change because I feel like January 2021 and beyond, when Mars gets into Taurus, it's going to be really strong and stable. And it's going to really see more things happen um, because it's going to be grounded in the real world. That's also where there could be the financial aspects that kick in, where you see how to make money with a new venture or the money, the finances shows up. And I'm just talking about money, but money is an energy. It's also looking at your deeper energetic connection to money. And if you've put too much importance on it, or you've been overly reliant on money as a source of happiness, uh, then you would have more work to do around your relationship with finances and your relationship with money and how to restructure that in a way where you understand that you can create money, you can make money, but you can also receive it. You can also allow it to come in. You don't have to overperform, over provide, over function, which is where you go into like this autopilot mode that ultimately isn't, ha isn't healthy. And I see it as a runner. And it's like running and running and you're afraid to rest or you're afraid to take a break because you think everything's going to fall apart. It's sort of why uh, even in American culture, people don't take enough vacations because they're afraid to step away from their email, afraid to step away from the uh, time clock. And it's this desire, again, it's the over-functioning. It's not healthy for any of us, but this is part of the deeper reprogramming that's really happening at that masculine level of performance and providing and being in control that can exhaust you. And again, this can show up as physical issues. Um, this can show up in any number of ways, but I hope this gives you some good things to think about, about what it means in your life to be truly aware of what's happening at a deeper core level, because it's easy to think it's happening to you, or it's a punishment, or it's something that you did or something you didn't do. And, you know, all of that is actually a lower consciousness that we all have around our fears um, and around looking at 
parts of ourselves that are out of touch with our own power. So this is a reprogramming of what is true for you, of a higher purpose, a new purpose, but related to a stronger sense of self built on a higher level of consciousness and a higher level of power. And I'm actually quite excited about this re-emerging masculine energy. And I still have more to share about this. I'm going to do a part two on this topic. It's just so vital right now because, again, I feel like there's been a lot of men who have just been struggling, searching, seeking, really trying to understand what to do. Um, the doingness is is crucial and important. But this is bringing you back into more of yourself internally. And that's then what you're going to carry forward. And I feel it so strongly because there's an energy too of no compromise, no compromise as well. Um, in the second part of this topic, I'm going to talk more about relationships because this is a really important topic too that I, I can't get into right now because it's its own topic. But I'm going to talk about what is shifting in relationships within masculine and feminine energies and why it's crucial that you stay in your integrity and that you stay in your strength and your power as these shifts occur. That part two will be coming out shortly and it's going to help ideally keep your eyes on the prize, so to speak, um, and to help you see what, what you can't go back to with some of these relationships and dynamics. Because I feel like some of you have been some really icky situations. Um, again, maybe you were blindsided, a lot of loss, a lot of financial changes. I'm going to talk more about that. So on that note, I'll be back with a part two. And I hope that this show has given you some reassurance and clarity. I hope it's helped you look at some deeper questions or issues to understand about your own path and your own world. And as always, I greatly appreciate your time, energy, and presence. I always hope that you get something out of every podcast that at least one mess message resonates for you. As always, you can find out more about my current offerings over at mollymccord.online or at consciouscoolchic.com, which is where I have my 12 books, audiobooks, spiritual teachings, and consciousness topics. Thank you so much for your time and energy. I'll be back soon with a part two, and I'll also be back on Wednesday with a look at the weekly astrology that's coming up for us. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon.